How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I'm doing something really special. Uh, it's something that I've been asked to do in the past, but it wasn't until this gentleman, who's going to introduce himself first. Who's this? Hey, guys. What? Dom of X, content creator by the same name, YouTube channel by the same name, X-Men podcast by the same name. I am the assistant editor of comicreleases.com, your one-stop shop for every single collected edition release update in the future. Happy to be here, Omar. Thank you. Dude, thank you for, do, uh, for doing this. Uh, Dom of X YouTube channel, thank you for that, James, my wonderful, wonderful producer and wonderful all-around good human being and comic releases, which we'll be using today. Great great source of written information in case you're wondering when things are coming out up to date information uh so please uh go and visit them great group of folks that run that ship too so this is a stream that i'm going to start doing every month because people have asked me to do it for a few years and i always said i would if i had time because time was the issue with this it's gathering the information because marbles is kind enough to put it together for me dcs i do by myself because dom knows when they send you information it's all over the place you got to get the images from one folder you got to get the content from another folder sometimes the images don't match the content so you got to do your own research but now it's dom that came and approached me because i said i needed an intern and he was so nice that he said hey man i can help you with that i do that anyway <laughs> 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 so i was like okay Very that will make my life so much better because people have been asking me to do this why don't you cover other solicitations instead of just marvel and dc honestly because marvel and dc puts it together for me it's so easy to do it matter of fact i'll be doing an advanced look at marvel's solicitations for june this thursday at 1 p.m eastern standard time but today we are focused on uh what, what do we got boom idw image comics titan and dark horse so some other big names out there putting out hardcovers library editions big 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 expensive editions and of course trade paperbacks so i'm very happy to finally be able to do this and a big thank you to dom for no just wanted to thank you omar i wanted to add in something real quick when i put the solicitations up on comic releases it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that's all you got out of me uh, I, I, no. To, like no because marvel and dc even though yes they, they there is a lot of content and honestly it's it's not just on the collected edition side like when when we get stuff from dc we get the whole shebang a bang we yeah. get you know all the images all of the the single issues and there's just a lot of material in there as well but if you guys all know, or if you guys don't know, I should say, uh, comic comic shops, when they get their stuff from the indie companies, they get this thick previews book from Diamond uh, solic or Diamond Previews and D Diamond Publishing, where it's this just giant catalog of yeah. all stuff. It's hard to put that on a regular format, especially when you have to pay for it. It's like four or five bucks a month. And on top of that, it's not all handled well out together. Sometimes they'll have stuff out of order. Sometimes trade paperbacks and hardcovers, they aren't grouped together in the same format and fashion as DC and Marvel do. So yeah. it's a lot It's a lot more work to find the correct-ish information, if I may. And they don't even do it in alphabetical order sometimes. It's just kind of like picking and choosing. And I'm sure it's a lot of work for those folks, too, to put it together. It And... Everybody thinks that, you know, when you say image and, and dark horse and Titan, that it's a big, big group of people. But sometimes it's really, really one person doing multiple jobs, putting things like this together. Uh, but big thank you to you, man. And, and yeah, Bruce, how that Cardi, thank you for the super chat. Yes, it's been a long time. Monday afternoon live stream. Yeah, so this will be a monthly thing now. Every last week, I think we're going to be doing this for the fall for the solicits. Like this solicits we're looking at is in May. At the end of March, we'll be looking at the June solicits for these folks. And if ever you all want us to do a look at the catalog, I'll be happy to do that too. The catalog is a little bit of a nightmare to go through, but it can still be done. Uh, so let me go ahead and thank you, Dom, for explaining that. 
really quick, hold on. If Dark Horse isn't putting BPRD in a library monster size, I'm hoping I get a chance to talk to them. Um, I need to email my contact over there, who's been wonderful but just swamped with work, about having a conversation about collective editions and how, how I can help or how we as a community can help. And honestly, all that is is just free market research for companies. So I think it's great. You know, we benefit from it and they as well. Any news on Titan Omnis? I know Titan is, Titan and Heroic Signatures. I always like to stress that it's both of them, right? Everybody throws Titan under the bus whenever there's delays. And where's my omnibus? And I get it. I'm excited for that too. Uh, but it is also owned by Heroic Signatures and they get to make decisions more so than Titan. Uh, part of the reason why there's delays. But they're still coming out. Uh, as a matter of fact, Savage Sword of Conan Omnibus, I want to say 10 showed up in the catalog. So they are, they're still going to work on them. So there you go. Uh, this is a great idea. Nice to see Dom on here. Yeah, this is the second second stream with Dom, right? And yeah, going second indeed. Just saw Dark Horse announce some mil yeah. Um, and it's funny because they don't really, really announce. You might see it on a website. It's not like breaking news, which I hope they get to use one day. Uh, it's like Mark Miller's bringing his library over here. Here's the books. Yeah. I guess if you get all the Netflix and stuff that mark owns you got to do some sort of announcement on it right especially with like a move from one indie company over to another so mm -hmm. i think i get it from that standpoint well I, <laughs> he shopped it around a lot he i'm has. surprised image didn't stick with it maybe dark horse was offering the hey we'll make it in these different formats they had the Kickstarter for irredeemable as a hardcover do you guys think boom will publish an omni hardcover for that in the future I know they had issues meeting their Kickstarters, and if they are going to do a hardcover release for the mass market, it might be a while. Mm -hmm. I hope they, 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 they need to get enough pre-orders for that, I think, to even push something out like that. And if, that, if there are problems <laughs> with the regular Kickstarter or not meeting up to those numbers, it, it might, be a, might be a while before we get somewhere to that point. And honestly, they've had so many issues with their uh, Kickstarters, whether it's the Giant Days or the Power Rangers or the, you know, either damages or mm -hmm. couldn't fulfill everybody's order or <laughs> sent the wrong cover. So they sent you your money back. It's it, it's a it's a bit of quality control because they're letting another company kind of be the middleman of running the Kickstarter. And that's what happens again. Boom isn't a I mean, they. They put out books, but they're not a giant studio. And it takes a lot of work to, to do this. So they really, what they probably need to do is just hire somebody that takes care of that. Just Kickstarter stuff and communicate with people. Catching up on the live stream today. Congratulations on the C2E2 panel. Thank you so much, indeed. man. I'm, I'm excited for that too. We're, we're all very excited. I, I told the gang that we're all going to do uh, the, I, said, oh, I need to email them back and ask them when we're going to do it though. What date? But uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. All right, Dom, let's go ahead and get started, buddy. Thank you again to Dom for putting this together for not just the Airman Condition, but also the website, comicreleases.com. Just saw us. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Really quick. CGN is restocking Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2 in May. Is it still eligible for reprint results? Apology for being off topic. No, I'm so glad. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the super chat. And thank you for reminding me. I forgot to mention that, and I'll probably share it on social media too. There is a restock of um, Ultimate Spider-Man 2, but it's only the standard cover, so that omits it from the reprint poll. So if it did get voted in the top 20, I'll do right and make sure to take it out of there. Because um, I remember I, I told David what the top 20 was, and he said, maybe I can do a quick restock of one of a couple of these. And I guess that's one of them. So, yes, that is coming back to print. The cool thing, or uh, not cool, the interesting thing is that Ultimate Spider-Man 3 is getting restocked in April. But it's all three covers. Now, the two direct market covers are super limited. So if you're interested in those, make sure you grab them the first day they drop. If you're interested in direct market at all. If they don't, don't worry about it. The statics is hitting the top 20. I got to look at it again, man. Because I, I don't know if Ultimate Spider-Man 2 made it or not. 
So there you go. All right, now let's get started. Uh, as always, I like to ask people, is that big enough? Is that big enough or can it be bigger? <laughs> All right, so we are looking at Boom. We're going to do these in order. Uh, we have Magic Book 1, the Deluxe Edition. And this is written by a lot of people that you may have heard of. Even though you may not be into Magic Comics, or comics, or to the cards, the trading card games, or to the art of. But uh, Jen McKay is one of the writers, and Marjorie uh, Scott. And the art in here is just full of artists that I've grown to love recently, like Jorge Coelho, or Iguara, uh, Michael Sheffer. Like, that's crazy. I had, I've never read any of this. So this collects the Magic 1 through 12, Magic Master of Metal number one, and Magic the Hidden Plane. It's, it's fun stuff. I only read, I read some of these issues because I had recognized a lot of names that were on Marvel or DC titles uh, before. Like Jed McKay doing Black Cat over at Marvel. I'm like, hey, I that was someone I liked. Let me go pick this up. And this is a someone who hasn't, I've, I know how to, like the whereabouts of Magic the Gathering and whatnot, but... I haven't done anything Magic the Gathering related or playing the games or sets. And surprisingly, I, I found myself enjoying a lot of these these issues. Um, well, it, I, I did the same thing with like Cyberpunk, the comic book. I never played the game Cyberpunk, what, 2077? Is that what it is? Um, somebody needs to take my geek credentials away. I don't think that's even the name <laughs> of the game. But I had never played the game, yet I found a lot of those stories really, really well done. And I think that's the point of all of these books. And thank you, Bruce, for the super chat. That is true. Irredeemable. The Kickstarters, remember, they said they would not do them as oversized hardcovers. They are standard size hardcovers. And we all wish it was bigger. Uh, but their response was, well, that's going to cost too much money. Which, again, probably lets you know what kind right. of Kickstarters are running. If, they, if it's going to cost too much money, then that's what you do as a Kickstarter to get the idea that people really want them. If people really want oversized hardcovers more than likely they'll pay a little more. That's the point of a Kickstarter. But I've said my piece enough about that. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Unlimited Power Volume 1. This is a soft cover collection collecting both Mighty Morphin 1 through 6 and Power Rangers 1 through 6. This is the relaunch of Power Rangers. This stuff has been available in trades before. It's also been available in the Power Rangers uh, deluxe, book 1. Yeah, deluxe yeah. book 1. It's called Book 1. Cyberpunk 27 to 7. Fake Omar, fake gamer girl. <laughs> What's wrong with gamer girls there, uh, Josh? You got a problem with gamer girls? You don't believe in gamer girls? It is Okay, I got it right. Why is Josh saying I'm a fake? I got it right, you punk. I pre-ordered Magic Trade Paper back, and now it comes in hardcover. Yeah, I didn't know. Always. This um, so this is an interesting collection because, like I said, it's available already in two trades and available in a hardcover. And Power Rangers Academy Volume 2. This has not been collected in any of the hardcovers yet. Uh, this is a newer series, collecting issues 5 through 8 of that series. The Space Between. I don't, I've don't. i never heard of this one. This is by Karina Becko and Danny Luckard. And this looks to be an original graphic novel. This is an original graphic novel uh, with yeah the Hugo, Hugo winner, Karina Becko. Um, I don't know much about the book because obviously like it's it's... This is the first time it's been solicited, but this is this is an OGN. Excellent. I like OGNs. And Abbott 1979, soft cover. This is collecting Abbott 1979, one through five by Saladin Ahmed. If you are a fan of his stuff, he um, he had a Kickstarter. What was the vampire book called? Um that was pretty good. I wish that he had done more with that story. And of course, his run on Miss Marvel and Miles Morales Spider Man. Was it Dragon? Dragon. That was it. Mm -hmm. Have you read that? I have not read it yet. No. My my podcast buddy, though, he 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 read it and liked it. I liked it. Um, I just wish it was more. All new Firefly, the Gospel According to Jane, Volume One. Collecting all new Firefly nine through ten, all new Firefly big damn finale. David Boer and Simona D. Gianfelice. I'll let Dom pronounce her last John name. Felice. I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> David's the guy that did a uh, Kanto. So 
I'm, I like that. Oh, and he also did the adaptation of uh oh my gosh, what's that book called? Rain. He did. Yeah. Oh, it says right there. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Hill's Rain, yes. <laughs> Maybe I should read the whole thing first. Uh, Met Cadets, Command and Conquer Control. Oh, that's where Takeshi Miyazawa's been hanging out. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about Miyazawa's artwork in the pages of, um, what was that? The uh, Spider-Man Loves Mary Jane. Written I, by my yeah, buddy, I, Greg Pack. Man, that, that Spidey Loves Mary, Mary Jane book, different conversation for a different time. I freaking love that series. My wife loved it. Sean McKeever's book? Yep. Yeah, my wife. The, the little um, tiny, we're preprinted in the tiny graphic novel size format. Yeah, she has the two, three oversized hardcovers. Oh, no, it's just two. It's just two. Uh, she really liked that series because it is very manga. It's very anime ish. It's very RG oh, it comics. Mm -hmm. uh, pure, simple. It is, but no, Mech Cadets, fun stuff. And I, I love Greg Pack too. Um, that guy's uh, solid. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice guy too. Rugrats. I didn't even know they had the rights to this. Rugrats Bestest Comic Book One Soft Cover Collecting Issues One Through Eight. This was my childhood. I I know that like for, well I think a lot of people. <laughs> awesome this first. how are you, buddy? This the near mint live. No, this this like I love the Rugrats series growing up. Like that was one of my favorites on Nickelodeon. When I was a kid. Like you put you pop that on TV. You have a fun time with Tommy and Lil and everyone else. Man, I'm I'm glad. Oh hold I'm on. Glad hold was, on. Yeah. Hold on a second. This was your youth? This was I'm my... Trying to, I'm trying to yeah. think. Because this premiered in 1992. Mm -hmm. uh, it re-aired um, re on Nick um, when I was a kid. Okay, okay. Her, yeah. I'm not going to try to get you to age yourself. I was just wondering <laughs> you don't look that old. How did no, you... No, man. But if... Kid? Honestly, I think, I think something more like Spongebob... Fairly odd parents, Jimmy Neutron, like that. That for me, that that's my childhood. This is like, it got added on because Nickelodeon re-aired a whole bunch of episodes, like right before uh, mornings on Saturday. I remember, um, so it started with like Red and Stimpy and mm -hmm. Doug. My brothers mm -hmm. and I would always argue over what the better cartoon was. <laughs> I like Red and Stimpy because it was just mm -hmm. obscure, weird, and so nasty. Uh, my brothers. I think both of them like Doug. And then we ended up getting like things like Rocco's Modern Life and stuff. Uh, Rugrats was always at the bottom. It was like, it was okay. It was cute. Mm. I always, they, all the voice actors always sounded like they had a cold. Uh, Rugrats, <laughs> 1991 to 2004. Dang, isn't this the fifth? It is the fifth day. Woo. Uh, Omar Near on Mint Street. Live. That's, that's, <laughs> that's not a, a bad name at million. all. Not a bad name at all. Near Mint Live. I can't do another channel. I'll let Dom helm that channel. That's so more. <laughs> Rugrats started when you were 40. Thank you for that. <laughs> Omar, change the topic. I don't want to feel old. Oh, my gosh. All my co-hosts make me feel old. That's why I have Jess. He's about the only one. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only one. That... Only one. He's the only, only one that one. doesn't make me feel old. All the rest of my co-hosts are like, oh, yeah, I remember when I was young and they were playing Pokemon in the – TV. I was like, Pokemon. Oh God. I was out of high school when that was coming out. Um, uh, moving on to IDW. <laughs> Chris Sandy's Black Widow's Artist Edition. Oh, yes, yes. I yes. cannot wait for this. I freaking love this run of Black Widow. I checked it out because Daredevil by Wade was one of the first, one of the first Marvel comics I've ever read, and my first Daredevil comic. Which I guess is weird to say because a lot of people say Miller or Bendis. And now it's like, no, like mine was Wade. Um, and Chris Samney, when he got on, I was like, man, this guy's awesome. You had Paul Rivera in that run too. But otherwise, I was like, you yeah. know, I got to check out other works of theirs. And then Black Widow was over there. Uh, Marty, who was working at my comic shop at the time, was what his name was, he was like, you got to read Black Widow too. I'm like, okay. And I picked it up. Man, I had such a fun ride with the series. This is, um, this, okay. This was my favorite Black Widow comic until Kelly Thompson came. Until out. Kelly Thompson's Black <laughs> Widow, man, and that artwork in Kelly Thompson's. Black yeah, Widow. with uh, El El Elena Casagrande on our Casagrande. Head. Yeah, that's when I stuff. grew to yeah. love her artwork. Oh my gosh, the sequential art, mm -hmm. that fighting sequence in the freaking uh, kitchen, mm -hmm. amazing, amazing. This is a masterpiece too, though. Like it is. Samney is on another level, like. 
the contrast that he does here. And it's really interesting to see his work here and compare it to like Captain America, but also compare it to the kids book that he's been mm -hmm. writing with. A, was it Somna. Wife, I think? Wait, not Somna. Um, Jonna and the. Joanna. Yeah. Jonna and, and the, the yeah. unbeatable I got, monsters. Yeah. yeah. Monsters. Yeah. It's really cool how much range Samney has, man. So these again, they're expensive, and you and the important thing, if you live in America, they hardly give a discount anywhere. Doesn't matter where you get your books, whether it's in stock trades or organic price books or cheap graphic novels, because it costs them an arm and a leg to get these. So there's hardly any discount for these. But oh my gosh, they're beautiful, beautiful books. Did they move back the Invincible Libraries volumes? One <laughs> they did. Volume one is now in March again. I'm not actually reach. I'm gonna reach out to Skybound to see what's going on with those. It's crazy. For that I, show, the was the Man, Batman animated series mm -hmm. running home for Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. Go ahead. I, I'm I'm thinking about getting this artist edition just because we don't have it in oversized format yet, and I don't think the run the run isn't long enough. I think to hold an omnibus. Um, but the thing you, is also you, like, you do a modern. Mm -hmm. Modern Black, Black Widow. Widow Omni. Or a Mark Wade Chris Samney omnibus and put Captain America with this. Oh man. Maybe, you know, I would love that to Captain have... America is otherwise also right. It's also working. not long enough to hold its like own. Oh. Yeah. Jo Jonah, thank you, Bobby. How Jonah, are you, buddy? Impossible. Impossible monsters. Thank with you, Mr. Bobby. Combined, we almost had the <laughs> the title right. Uh <laughs> trade paperback. So you know they still have the rights to Ninja Turtles. They're going to keep cranking them out. Uh, this is the fourth girl. I really thought they were done with the best of Ninja Turtles with three of them. But it looks like they're focusing on more villains now. We got Krang and uh, Bebop and Rockstar. Yeah, they, they always ho like have the like weird, thick single issues that cost about seven to nine bucks. You know, they come out every single like month and a half with those. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they just decide, hey, like, let's continue to mash them. They've been doing it. Um, they need, you know, something to put out before the Jason Aaron uh, relaunch, right? With all the oh, the one one hundred and fifty is that the last one, and then they relaunch it, right? Three hundred. I thought it was issue three hundred. Bunk Master B, why are we already talking about double dipping? I had enough double dipping talk the last two days, but yes, you would double dip because you would have to have some of the Daredevil in there. Worth it. Hey, Richard, how are you, buddy? Speaking of Black Widow. We really need the rest of Winter Soldier in omnibus oversized format. That's right, because it was just the Brubaker era that got collected. Uh, this stuff is fun. This is the Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, Tom Waltz stuff, Sophie Campbell writing a lot of the stories in here, uh, Jim Lawson doing the art, but focusing on the villains that time around. Dungeons and Dragons, Jim Zub, of course, now blowing up because of Conan. Love it. All around nice guy. But a huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd. And this is like, if there's a Dungeons and Dragons, he actually um what was he was tweeting something I saw yesterday uh to a movie studio, and he was like, Hey, if you need a Dungeons and Dragons movie script, I got you. Because he talks about how him and his brother used to be big D D guys. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I'm like, Did you ever take any of your stories from D D as a dungeon master and like putting them in your uh Conan stories? And he was like, Oh, maybe. Why not just the Black Widow Volume 2 add the Kelly Thompson run? I think because there's... Um, oh, why not call it a Black Widow Volume 2? Probably because modern Omnibus... Like, I think the first you, one... You're going to put Edmondson and Noto in there too, right? Yeah, and uh, I'll even throw in... Actually, it's not a bad run. Uh, Devin Grayson's run in there. Yeah, Devin yeah. Grayson's run. That way you have like a modern collection. But they didn't call it classic. They called it something else than they the Black Widow Omnibus. I can't remember what it was called. Really enjoying these Domar streams. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> like it's a little annoying that we can get a cluster bus for the beginning Black Widow, but we can't get it for the modern stuff we want. Was it um was it Black Widow Strikes? Strikes. That's it. Yeah, strikes. Mm -hmm. Why not add all the Black Widow comics from 2010 together and make a modern omni? Yes, that's what yeah, we were that, talking about. We were I would love that. I actually see maybe the Black Widow, Mark Wade, and Chris Samney. Another option is probably the gallery edition, too. Probably go that route. Mm -hmm. They know it's a popular they know it's a popular story. They know it's a popular artist and a 
popular writer. Pop- so probably something like that. Because my thing too is like if we Ooh, like if wait, the- that's it. The new one can be called Strikes Back. I like that, Matt. <laughs> Black Widow Strikes Back. I like that. Oh, I like Domar of X. Have there been an Omni Library of Zubs DND yet? I don't think so. Has there? Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. There might have been a big collection of his DND. Uh, I never got around to getting it, so I'm not really sure. Uh, the Dungeons and Dragons Saturday Morning Adventures. Here's another David Boer book, and this is. The characters from the Saturday morning. I love that cartoon in the 80s. I actually bought the Hasbro toys of them. But let's see. This is uh, aired on CBS and ran for twenty three seasons, 27 episodes. Premature cancellation. Yes, premature cancellation. A lot of Marvel talk for the indie stream. Also, we know they won't do it because it makes Barr happy. Barr has plenty of... Uh, Poison Ivy and Harley to keep her happy. Omar, you've been working super hard with all these consecutive streams lately. Appreciate the hard work you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You can blame Dom for this one. He said, I'll make it easier for you. And I was like, I made oh, it. Man, to I'm be so- fair, I've been doing like the last three streams I've had involvement in or some type of it. So, okay, that's true. That's right. You have. <laughs> What's up, man? I'm a huge Black Widow fan. So, Modern Omni would make me super happy. True. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. I loved it. Oh, we're, I don't know if Taylor's watching, but they're coming out with a soft cover. If you can't afford the big hard covers, this is the EC Covers Artisan Edition. 160 pages, $39.99. And collecting all the original cover art for those. Oh, uh, no, Dom had no involvement with the real. I'm asking him to make thumbnails for those, though. Omar, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of concepts, man. <laughs> I'm going to kill Jess. Uh, I do not make $150,000. He is out of his mind. He makes more money out of his social security than I do out of YouTube videos. I can guarantee you that. That's my, I told him he's catching in on my social security that I paid into. (laughs) Kingdom Riders. I ain't going to see it. Kingdom Riders. Shannon, Eric Denton, and Marcus Toe. Dude, I love Marcus Toe's art. Same. Me too. I don't know how that guy has not blown up. Uh, like Red that, Robin, uh, Nightwing, uh, recently Excalibur, some of uh, Jin Luen Yang Shang Chi. I yeah, love his stuff, man. That. Really a nice yeah. guy too, from uh, what my friend up in Canada has told me. I have not uh, had the chance to meet him, but I've been a big fan of his work for a while. Surprised he he's not up there with like all the Pepe Larras, uh, RB Silva me artists because he just has like a super clean style, but it works so well for all of his books. It really mm-hmm. does. I dig it. Corgi, the complete tell. So all of it in one book. That's cool. Mm-hmm. 584 pages. This is a soft cover. Yes. It's got to be a soft cover. Yeah. It's Trade paperback. $39.99. Yeah. His joyride was so good. And it was perfect for that. So did anyone see the new Usagi Jimbo hardcovers? Are they in the L device or the, no, they use PRH. We'll look here in a little bit. I'll look and see what's up there. My Little Pony, Camp Big Hoof. Now, this is the relaunch of My Little Pony. So I don't have the nostalgia for this. Uh, that I do the My Little Pony from this era right here with Pinkie Pie and Buttercup. Because that's what my uh, daughter would watch. And mm-hmm. she would that was her first comic she would collect was My Little Pony. Oh, that's Magic. awesome. Magic. She has all 100 issues. Nice. That's cool. Start. Yeah, she can retire now or pay for her school. <laughs> Uh, Star Trek, <laughs> Strange New <laughs> World, Scorpius Run. Justin, how are you, buddy? Have they ever made a TMNT Omni or anything like that? They did. They made a compendium. They made a standard size. The standard size, yeah, two of them. Two. Compendium. No, they're they're oversized. They're the size of an omnibus. Um, well, I mean, like by the height, the height or whatever you want to call it. Like I, because I remember getting them through my comic shop and noticing they were slightly smaller. Uh, than your than the height of a regular Omni, the compendiums, the compendiums, yeah, the two compendiums of the classic, the two compendiums, yeah. Don, or my no, mistake? Yeah, your mistake. It's okay. Uh, it's your first time making a mistake. It's okay. No big deal. Um, no, they're the size of an omnibus. Uh, they're flat spined. Their volume two is missing a lot of the, the issues by uh, Rick 
uh, Beach, Beach, um, because licensing was so different in Mirage Studios, and really kind, but it kind of bit them in the butt later on. Peter Laird and uh, Kevin Eastman decided, okay, every time we have a writer come in here and write a story for Ninja Turtles, it belongs to them. Doesn't matter if it's our characters. When they bought the rights back from a lot of the writers, everyone, but a couple of people, including Dave Sim, was, no, I'm going to keep it. Thank you, though. And that's why some of the issues are missing from the second compendium and the Dave Sims missing from the first compendium. Do you think Boom will ever do an MMPR plus GoGo Omnibus? They'll do a deluxe edition first. They're not really big into the Omnibus game. I haven't seen a big thick book from them. Could the third modern Black Widow stuff be called Black Widow Strike Back to the Future? Yes, this blue channel. Pizza box colored classics are bigger than Omnis. Yes, the big deluxe editions, what are they called? The ultimate editions? They're, yeah, They're the taller ultimate. than yeah. Omnis. Mm -hmm. And the color works, the, they're the ones in the pizza boxes. But both of them are out of print. Dom, don't listen to Omar. It's not a stream unless he screws up 30 times. I've never messed up. I make it all look good, baby. I feel like a Black <laughs> Widow modern Omni could just be called Black Widow Strikes Again. Just seems fitting. I really like that. Uh, you gotta, Star Trek, you gotta pitch it. You gotta pitch it. I gotta pitch it. I do it. I get like three books I pitch a year. And they may listen to me. Um, <laughs> well, they're taking a chance with that Ghost Rider, that's for sure. But I gotta hype it up, man. It's one of my favorite runs. But I think I think it'll do fine. That and Extinction Agenda. Mm -hmm. Hope hope they do. Very well. excited for the Extinction Agenda on me. Very very much so. We'll have to talk a little more about X Men though. Star Trek: Star Strange New Worlds. Mike Johnson, Ryan Parrott. Angel Hernandez collecting the five issue series. I didn't know Star Trek uh, or uh, Brian Parrott was a Star Trek veteran. Yeah, he's he's been around there for gosh, it feels like a couple of years now. Well, I know that he was big in the Power Rangers and he works a lot with Kyle Higgins, it, but mm -hmm. I didn't know he was into that. Wow, is this okay? I was gonna say, I'm sure it's putting the miniseries together. Mm -hmm. So, this is putting the two miniseries of Jenica together, mm -hmm. as well as her introduction in issues 93 to 95 in the free comic book day. Indeedy, all in one collection. So, if you have the uh IDW hardcovers, that's this is already collected in there. I'm hoping we'll see reprints of the IDW deluxe uh Ghostbuster books. Oh, it won't be from IDW, they lost the rights. And as a matter of fact, all of Ghost, Ghostbusters has been pulled from um, uh, their digital media. So that, like, you can't even find them digitally. <laughs> You're thinking of Dream Warriors, Doug. That's from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. We're the Dream Warriors. Oh, my gosh. Now that song's going to stuck in my head. Thanks for that. <laughs> I love that song. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Morning Adventures 2. This is not the classic stuff, but it's a retro series. It's a Kinda retro like series. What DC was doing. Go ahead. No, this is this is all fun material, too. I read the first couple of issues of the series, and no, oh, it makes you feel like... And I remember being a kid again on those Saturday mornings, just watching my cartoons. All good, same vibe. These are These are pretty awesome. Yeah, it reminds me of what DC was doing with the uh, Batman Adventures by having like, Adventures. Paul Dini come back and write mm -hmm. like what would happen in the next season. Yeah, season one, season two, season three. Okay, so the TMNT omnibus or compendium, as they were going to call it, didn't officially get solicited. It was in the catalog. And that's what happens when mm -hmm. people get too excited over things in the catalog. Since it was never officially solicited, it was never really officially mm -hmm. canceled. So. It may exist, but maybe, maybe they in the future. Yeah, maybe now. they thought, oh, is this a good... Maybe they looked at the sales of the compendiums and were like, well, this isn't doing as good as we thought it was going to do. So maybe that's why they decided to take it out of the catalog or focus on something else for now. Why don't they just come back to the Lost Years and the Last Ronin into one big... Because I don't think they're done with the Lost Years and La uh, Last Ronin because they have a new series coming out that's taking place after Last Ronin. Let's go to... The next Dark Horse. Dark Horse. So we got Borealis, 
by Mark Verhindine, Verhindine and Aaron Douglas. They do a lot of, um, what is it, um, tapas and comicsology originals, and they put them into uh, collected editions. And I'm so happy to see this. I know it's a standard size hardcover, and Can't maybe tell. one day, yeah, I'm so glad. Well, it's gonna, you know, bring new readers to reading it. It's such a good series. But this is the second Kanto. This is volume two, The Hollow Men, one through five, and the Clockwork Fairies one shot. If you haven't read it and you like fantasy, if you like cute fantasy, maybe something that'll make you cry. I'm not gonna go into spoilers. That's so good. It's well done. And volume three, the Tales of the Unnamed World. I think this is a series of one shots, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, bridging the events of Hollow Man and Lionhearted. Uplifting Monk collects Kanto in the City of Giants and both issues of Kanto Tales of the Unnamed World in a high quality hardcover reprint with a brand new cover. So, again, standard size hardcovers, $29.99. But if you haven't had a chance to read it and you didn't pick it up in IDW, or if you're not a fan of trade paperbacks and you're waiting for a hardcover, they were never released as hardcovers in IDW, but now being released here. The Change. Will be Gold Goldberg. What? Yeah. <laughs> you say yeah like you know. What? No. That's what I that's what I, I she co-write this? Was that she co-wrote co co it with, with heroes. <laughs> I think it's like the same deal with like Amelia Clark on that one book. I keep forgetting the name too. It's just they want to do a comic, get an established ish veteran who can help them along with the script, put it all together, and bam, bam, bam. You got you got your uh, got your book right there. You usually when I see things like that, it means that the actor or actress is trying to shoehorn themselves into a role. Not looking at Keanu Reeves and Berserker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It happens a lot. Who was the latest one? Was this? Oh, it was Tom Hardy. He was at New York Comic Con. I'm like, what is Tom Hardy doing at this comic book booth? Oh, that right. main That's character what... looks a lot like Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, Den. Uh, resolicited. It's been delayed, but finally coming out. This is volume two. Love this stuff. And you have uh, the colors are in here by Jose Villarubia, mm -hmm. but it's Richard Corbin, man. This stuff Richard is Corbin. crazy. Oh, yeah. Love this it. Style's incredible. Absolutely. The man who studied murdered and Neil. Oh, this is the Eric story Powell, of yeah. the guy that did mm -hmm. the seduction of the innocent, right? Indeed. Dr. Worthless. Oh, hell yes. Oh, yes. Hardcover. 200 pages, twenty nine ninety. Oh, Eric, you had me at Eric Powell. Yeah. Okay, I'm in. The reason yeah. why I want this book. Is the Keanu Reeves Berserker actually... I haven't read it because I'm waiting on the hardcover because I'm an idiot. Just like people that waited for a Kanto. Now, now we can all get it. Uh, I think there's a deluxe hardcover. It might... Actually, there's a slipcase edition coming out of Berserker. There is. Yeah, I'm in for this. Uh, Eric Powell is... Mm -hmm. One of my favorite artists, and yeah, his storytelling is incredible. No, this is something I'm definitely gonna buy. Buy. As oh well. yeah, when I review, I even I'll never forget. Four years ago, I've known about. So I'm, uh, I've known about this for about a year and a half now, and I couldn't say anything because I said, "Are you all working on any deluxe edition?" So you know, Trigon, I knew about, and they had told me about this. And I'm like, we don't know which one to release yet. But we're thinking probably the uh, Mountains of Madness. And I was like, ironically enough, when I reviewed the two manga volumes, I said, boy, Tanabe's art would look really good in oversized format. And damn, here we are. 626 pages, $49.99. It is a retelling of H.P. Lovecraft's at the Mountain of Madness. But the artwork it's so good. It's so good. If you've not read it, if you've not read it, uh, Eric Powell's art. Are those doggies or greatest of all time? Those are goats. <laughs> if you disagree with me, you are dead to me. <laughs> I might actually get this one, Mongo or not. It's good, dog. You got to read it. 
right to left, though. That's the only problem. I wish we could get TMNT Adventures from Archie recollected in proper deluxe. Yeah, they did a lot of collections of trade paperbacks. I love mean, the cheap newsprint reprints in the past, but hoping for better quality paper one day. Well, it's funny. It's like when we were doing the DC Finest, that was one of the things that uh, the chat was worried about is that paper stock is going to be that newsprint paper. And people were not happy with that. But we've yet to see what they're going to do. The Legend of Luther Arkwright. This is Brian Talbot. And 240 pages. It is a hardcover. $49.99. Might be original. I don't know. Let's see. It's a sequel to The Heart of Empire. Have been acclaimed by Alan Moore, Neil Gaiman, Michael Moorcock. Hmm. I've, I've not read that. Sergio Argones, Louder Than Words, Action Speaks, collecting issues one through six. And Madman Library Edition. Mad Man. So for a while, when volume one came out, I think they had uh, they had stated that they were only going to do five. And then when volume two came out, I think on Twitter, he said, I think we're going to go with six because there's enough content to make six of these big library editions. Um, they are pretty pricey because they're ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents for five hundred and twenty pages, but they are library size. They're they're big books. Like if you, I don't know why I'm looking over here. You people can't see, but they're bigger. Uh, like the Hellboy and the Goon and Harrow County, and of course, Did you I'm say missing... that they're about absolute edition ish size. If you want, without the slipcase, without without the slipcase. Slip like if you have the 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 Black Hammer ones, yeah. Oh my gosh. How in the world? Yeah, they're actually publishing. I, I did a hell yes when a friend of mine uh, texted me the tweet. I know it's old, but it's really cool to see a lot of people, including people Dom's age, are super excited. <laughs> they are. Hey, they, they are. They I can know. attest. I can attest to it. They know how good it. and popular the series was that we never got here. We never got that treatment. I actually said hell yes to that and the Red River three and ones. Uh, that Viz is going to be publishing. I can't wait for that because I missed out on so many of the volumes. And when I went to check, they were out of print. Uh, but this will be the final volume uh, that collects all of Alred's award-winning Madman universe, the Madman verse in selected reading order for the ultimate Madman fan. So you have graphics music, graphic music, and the cult hit comics, Madman in Your Face, 3D special, Mr. Gum, who sell out. You sell out, as well as Al Allred's uh, latest creator-owned X-Ray robot, which I, I, a lot of this stuff is going to be new to me. And Mobius Live Bay. Finally, they're bringing this back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've missed this. They've had the rights to Mobius for so many years. And one of the things I know that they can't do, unfortunately, is the uh, Blueberry which I know a lot of us Mobius fans want to bring uh, want somebody to bring all of that over to the U S maybe one day, but I'm glad they're continuing this. And this is the major 192 pages, 39.99. Skinner. I almost said it like uh superintendent. <laughs> from the just, had to. just had to <laughs> should have done my, that at first my should have done that at first my kid loves that show man I, lo I love watching the simpsons with her brings back a lot of memories 88 pages 24.99 look maybe it's an original graphic novel it is it's standard size sized. yeah this right here sub genre is mad Ma yeah another mad title wilfredo torres collecting sub genre one through four Super Nintendo Chalmers, yes. <laughs> you knew. Uh, 120 pages, $29.99. World of Warcraft Chronicles, Volume 4. This is another one of those big books. I think they are the size of... They're 9 by 12 I want to say they're the size... Oh, that's even bigger than... It's even bigger than the library. A little bigger, yeah, no. than that. So, what World of Warcraft Chronicles... Five expansions, fourth installment of the best-selling Chronicle series. Okay, so it's comics. Uh, moving on to the trades, we have Colin Bunn and Danny Luckert's Beyond Mortal. Colin Bunn pumping out more 
comics and writing more comics than I can read. <laughs> I don't know how he does. Him it. and Lemire, man, they're they're both machines. I swear. I, look, I, I don't. <laughs> I can't keep up. I every time I interview Colin Bond, I'm like, I, you don't sleep, do you? Because he's always like, I, yeah, man, <laughs> always I'm always writing something on this, yeah. And Black Hammer Volume Eight, the end. This is the ending of the Black Hammer saga. That. Man, that, that series has been, been around for a, while, for a little right? while. Yeah. Malachi Ward is the artist on this. Um, collecting the end one through six, and then you have a sketchbook in there. All these different artists, including with Fredo Torres, too. <laughs> Captain Momo Secret Base Volume One, Kenji Suru Suruta. Um, so this is a brand new series. I got excited when I read Captain Momo because I was immediately thinking. When I saw the very top of that in the stars, I'm like, Captain Harlock. It's the stuff I grew up with. But uh, I do like Kenji Suruta. Uh, what was the book that he, they did? Emanon? Em Emanon. That was the book they did. And, of course, my all-time favorite that I don't know why nobody's going to finish, Spirit of Wonder. Oh, I love mm. that. If you haven't seen the – there was an OVA in a movie, but also a – it was – Dark Horse did, I think, the first two series translated them in single issues back when they were doing single issue manga <laughs> and oh my gosh his art is just so beautiful carmilla volume two the last vampire is amy chu amy beautiful chu. artwork in here too if you haven't had a chance to check it out trying to get more into black hammer love the start but it dropped should i keep going at least at the very least brother read the stuff by lemire you don't have to read all the mini series and one shots are great i think it adds to the characters uh, but at least read the main series by Lemire. I I dig it. Getting this love, Eminon. Oh, did you, dude? Uh, were you, Elon? Were you also a fan of uh, Spirit of Wonder? I don't know if you checked that out. It's been out of print for so long. Where's the Lemire interview? I gotta kidnap him. I gotta go <laughs> to the north. Where's some? Gotta I gotta ask Lemire and Bun at the same time if they get sleep. If they get sleep. <laughs> Um, I've met him at a convention before. I never did they ask him for a. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll reach out to one of the publishers to see if they can make it happen. Thank you for that reminder, Justin Wilson. Census. So collecting census one through five. This is one that was originally published in Comicsology. Dude, I gotta give them props. They mm -hmm. are continuing these creepy and eerie archives mm -hmm. and all the EC mm -hmm. library. I know they're not in hardcover. But they, but they, they keep, but they keep pumping them out. We're at seven yeah. now. After like every month, there's every... at least one or two, either of the, uh, the old Warren stuff mm -hmm. or the old EC stuff. Um, so it's selling. It's mm -hmm. got to be yeah. selling. Yeah. Is is it? I kind of figured it was expensive. They really, 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 really need to just reprint that stuff. It's so good. Collecting creepy 33 to 36 i'm just glad it's at least people can read that stuff cyberpunk 2077 i was right <laughs> it's a good day <laughs> is it exo or kisses what are we doing here uh one through four i think exo exo sounds better <laughs> saying it out so my daughter also went down the rabbit hole of looking up the different steam hams in different languages, and it's ridiculous the rabbit holes we go on YouTube sometimes. Dangan Ropa, volume two, Chiaki Namani's Nanami's Goodbye Despair Quest Volume Two. That is based on the video game. My daughter was obsessed with my oldest. I don't think mm. she she doesn't she doesn't keep up or care anymore. Exo Exo Manamore. <laughs> Drifters Omnibus coming out. Surprised they went the Omnibus route because this is still uh, Kota uh, Hirano instead of making it a deluxe edition. But this collects volumes one, two, and three. Drive Like Hell. Hey, by my good buddy, Rich Duick. I love his stuff. Yeah? Yeah. So, have you read any of this stuff? Um, I read the first issue and I liked it a lot. What else has he done? What's he Rich did... Done? Um, he did one of the um old man he did the old man star lord uh one shot for marvel uh back that was a couple years ago uh wrote of bones and sea of sorrows as well okay can i maybe reach out to john i actually have i still have his email he was nice enough to Give Melanie and I his email to just email him sometime. I wonder how busy he is now though, because he's the main guy on we ASM. Still, 
Yeah, he's been on ASM for so many years. Actually, he took a little bit of a break, right? Because Ed McGinnis. And Ed McGinnis was on and Patrick, Patrick Gleason. Patrick Gleason. Uh, both got on. But yeah. he drew all the gang war. It's crazy. And speaking of EC and Ward Comics. Oh, More ECs. Man. EC Archives, Weird Fantasy Volume 4. Some good stuff, man. Mm. I love Weird Fantasy. That's up. That's up there with the horror stuff. I can't believe we're still getting empowered. That's crazy. I thought this was done. I thought it was finished. I was like, I, I looked at all the freaking three big omnis. I'm like, is it done? And apparently not. <laughs> Adam Warren. To a lot of us, Adam Warren was about the only manga we got in America for a long time. Him and uh, who was it? Ben Ben Dunn. Ben Dunn those yeah. guys that worked at Antarctic Press because mm -hmm. it was like, we don't need manga. We got manga at home. <laughs> That's the Here's way they the manga work. home. <laughs> uh, Adam Warren's the guy that did the Bubblegum Crisis story. Yeah, loved it. I'm a big fan of Empowered. It's got parental advisory. Definitely more. 100 is a hundred percent is a parental advisory. <laughs> Definitely market it to a specific audience like myself and Warren. Uh, yeah, I I dig it. I'm glad they're still continuing though. Goblin Volume Two: The Wolf in the Well. Will Perkins is the artist. I like that cover. That is a nice cover. Trade paperback, $19.99. And Helsing Volume 9. Uh, these were marketed. It's interesting. These were marketed as Helsing Volume 9 Deluxe Editions, second edition. But they're not deluxe editions. They're not tall. They're not yeah. oversized. They're just the Tonka Bonds. But the reason they were marketed, marketing them as deluxe editions at first is because they were using the scans from the latest deluxe editions, the oversized hardcovers. To make these that's i think why they call it. but it looks like they've taken the name deluxe edition out of the title keep your hands off izuken volume seven sumu sumitu who is that urawa Uwara? <laughs> I, I could have done that one i was having problems with the first name i don't know Sumito. why sumito sumito yeah i haven't seen i haven't haven't read this series looks, looks fun though beyond the anime okay so it's continuing from the anime Kill Me and Other Curiosities. So it collects Dark Horse Presents short stories, Kill Me, Now and Then, Yesterday's Muse, Dead Air, Radio Gaga, The Jock, and Breaking Out. Chad Lambert. 80 pages. Oh, yes, son. Kurosagi, Kurosagi Court, Court Delivery Court. Service, Book 6, Omnibus. Yes. Uh, I can't believe they've reprinted the entire run. Was it last year? With Volume 5. We finally got Volume 5. And for the first time, we're getting books that were never released in America in Tonkabon. Which is pretty awesome. That era. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. We still need, I think, a couple of more to finish out the series. I And I hope they do another reprint because I think some of those are out of print again of the Omnibus Volumes 2 and 3, I think. I'm just glad they they're, uh, they keep on Yeah, playing. I'm glad this is out. Like, I've never, I've, I've always wanted to, to read the series because a friend mm -hmm. of mine recommended it to me like a year ago. But, hey, now they're pumping out the volumes and we got number six. It's, oh, it's awesome stuff. I just like the idea that somebody, a publisher can have this license for so long. Nothing comes out. Nothing and comes I mean, out. nothing comes out for years. <laughs> and then they're like, Let's put it out. Well, the same thing's happening with Oh My Goddess. They're like, oh, by the way, here's Oh My Goddess Omnibus Volume 7. That comes out in March. So excited for that. Loud stories to make your voice heard. I want to say this. Well, no one can do it for you, but you don't have to do it alone. This was, this was promoted a few months back, and I cannot remember what it was. It was in celebration of something. Um, but it looks familiar. The art looks familiar. You have different authors there, and Noel as the artist. Murder Vale, Vincent C. Fuentes, and this is collecting Murder Vale books one through three, S A F edition. Interesting. And speaking of Mark Miller, here we go with Nemesis Reloaded. Jorge Jimenez is the artist on this. One hundred and forty-four pages, nineteen dollars and ninety-nine. Sense. He was the reason, or this was the reason to why Jorge wasn't on the um second arc of Chip Zdarsky's Batman. This was the reason. Oh, okay, I believe I this was the reason, yeah. I'll just keep quiet. Well, my thoughts. 
on Nemesis. Um, <laughs> you know what? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Hold on. Mark Miller <laughs> advertised Nemesis as, I swear to God, the, the ad was, mm -hmm. what if Batman was a see you next Tuesday? You could make up what that is. And most people were like, well, that's edgy. And then other people were like, but he is. <laughs> like, <laughs> Batman is that. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, Miller? Like, uh, apparently. Yeah, uh, Jorge to draw it. And Jorge. Well, it, it, it did well enough that it got a couple of other series. Nemesis went on. Because I think, was it Steve McDivin that did the first series? Steve, Steve did, did do the first series. Yeah. yeah. Nightclub, more Mark Miller. Uh, this is one I haven't read. Um, Juan Ramirez is the artist collecting Nightclub Volume 1, issues 1 through 6. Uh, who took over publishing the Ghostbusters comics? Dark Horse now owns the rights of Ghostbusters. Whether they go back and republish those uh, IDW stories, I don't know. I wish they would have finished the hardcovers, though. St. John. Portland Gear presents St. John, collecting St. John 1 through 4. Brennan Wagner and Dan Shikade. Slightly exaggerated. This is by Curtis Clow, Tom Roman Titov. I love that cover. Uh, collecting issues one through four of slightly exaggerated. Space Usagi, Death and Honor. Awesome. Stasak. Man, I had a chance to meet Stan a couple of uh, years ago. He's a super, super nice guy. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I love Usagi Ojimbo, man. I, some of those stories in there, like, they are incredibly tight. Well done. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Usagi. Whether he's in space, mm -hmm. whether he's in black and white, or whether he's being mm -hmm. reprinted in color. I'm a big fan. Whether he's crossing <laughs> whatever, over. Whatever Usagi comes out, I will, I will be. The happy. ridiculous Usagi Ojimbo toy that we got from Ninja Turtle. I still have fond <laughs> memories of that toy. It looks nothing like him <laughs> in the cartoon nor in the comics. Sparks Volume 1. Rebel Guts. Boy, that nun, null artist is really popular. <laughs> uh, I want to say this looks like a tapas book, like a tapas original, because it's that same style, mm. but it doesn't say. And Star Wars Hyperspace Stories, Qui Gon Jinn by George Mann, Andre Moody, Comic Craft. Oh, Comic Craft. And Michael Cho, $19.99. So they do they do the uh the kids um Star Wars comics, but mm. those kids' comics are great too. John Smith, I did not call you, but you're welcome to stay here. <laughs> Reprint the hardcovers, please. Oh, yeah, man. That would be awesome. Steve McCrane, Space Boy. Has anybody read this? I've been wanting to read this. Um, they 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 started releasing them in omnibus format, but you know, trade paperback omnis, not oversized hardcovers. But this is volume 19. Obviously, they've got a big fan following. And Stranger Things. Michael Morecci's working on this. I love that guy. He's the dude that did uh, Barbaric. Nate Piecos. Yeah. And this is Stranger Things, The Voyage, one through four. Oh, I said St. John. My bad, my bad. My bad. Saint then I must have called St. John. <laughs> Tra Transplants by Dave Collard and Domenico Carbon. And this is a trade paperback, 88 pages. These seem to be like original graphic novels. And Vampire Hunter D, Volume 30, Gold Fiend, Parts 1 and 2. My wife loves these. Loves the Vampire Hunter D novels. Loves Vampire Hunter D so much, We she walked down the aisle to the Vampire Hunter theme. That theme well, uh, okay. 1985. Wow. Yes, she loves that movie. Uh, but that is the, it's not, by the way, it's not a manga. It, these are actual prose novels. Pro. With... Yoshitaka Mano art in between chapters. In between the okay. mm -hmm. Who done it? El Torres. This is the second second is Vicente Sefuentes drawn. Yeah. Trade paperback. Ninety six pages, nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. And The Witcher Volume Eight, hundred and twelve pages. Wild animals collecting issues one through four of The Witcher Wild Animals, nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. All right, we got. Uno Mas, Titan, 
resoliciting Savage. Re Doug Conan. still in the chat. Sword of Conan, original omnibus, volume nine. This was supposed to come out last year, but now it is scheduled to come out August 7th, 2024. And in the catalog, there is a Savage Sword of Conan, the original year's omnibus volume 10. So, I mean, they are determined to get these out. I'm excited. I love Conan. I miss Conan. That Jim's Up Conan was good. Really, really good. And I want to go back to that era. I love the Sumerian. Hagar the Horrible. The first 50 years. Oh, that's cool. And it would... it's got all the first 10 years in there, too. So, I'm... Um... September 11th. $49.99. I wonder what the... F it doesn't say the size. I was more... Curious about it. Looks like a landscape size book. It's like one of those uh, comic strip type collected editions. Yeah, like Fantagraphics is done mm -hmm. with Dick Tracy and Peanuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So excited for these Conans to get the just then. Don't bring that into the world. The Titan never published any Conan so far. It feels like everything's been delayed. Uh, what they've published is the Savage Sword of Conan magazine and the first trade paperback of Jim Sumsrum. And if you haven't read it, it is freaking phenomenal. And that you will fall in love with Roberto's artwork in that. Blade Runner 2039, Volume 3. Ash is coming out, collecting issues 9 through 12 of uh, Blade Runner. Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls, sorry, Willow Dark King. Dark Souls. Oh, they're doing two. They're doing a direct market cover, huh? They, you know, I, I found it funny because DC started doing the, well, I guess they did it after Titan. But uh -huh. DC also does direct market covers for some trade paperbacks nowadays, which I find weird. But Titan's been doing well. They a did lot it with of, Conan. It, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then they did. I think they did it with um, the Gun Honey. They did it with Gun Honey. If I remember. Oh yeah, because yeah. some of those covers mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not safe for work. <laughs> they are definitely not safe for work. <laughs> they are super sexy covers. Yeah. Disenchantment, Untold Tales, Volume 2. It's interesting what they have the rights to at Titan Comics. Um, and then we have Rebel Moon. So this is actually Zack Snyder writing these with, of course, Mags Visagio. Mm -hmm. uh, but he is co-writing them. And this is collecting Issues the blood one four. I got oh. issue one because Art Germ did a cover or did the main cover on it, I should say. Which is the DM cover. This one here? Or no, it's the regular cover. The the DM market one is the one by Rafa Albuquerque. Oh, okay. I yeah. got you. And then we've got, last but not least, Image Comics. With Alita 1 right there. Spawn Origins, the Lux Edition Volume 7. They are determined to keep these going. Collecting issues 151 to 175, $99.99. Every 25 issues, got to get a big old deluxe edition of all the spawns. Well, and then they're doing, yeah, well, they are doing the, um, what are they the called? Compendiums. Yeah, the compendiums, and then they're doing the complete, complete. books, the hardcovers. Mm -hmm. They're reprinting volume one. They are. Universal Monsters Dracula is coming out. Oh, this is the book I have, I wanted to read. Uh, and it looks like it's coming out in a hardcover format, but it doesn't have the dimensions. I wonder if this is going to be oversized because it is. I tiny. hope it is. It, yeah. It's, it's JT4 and uh, Martin Simmons. So like, you got to. <laughs> the Spawn Deluxe have the Armageddon stuff. Let's see. Where are we? 151 and 175. Yeah, because that happened before issue 200. So it should have that in there. Hey, Omar, quick question. Is there any chance to get Dixon Nightwing Run gets reprinted soon? Maybe Compendium. The, yeah, the Compendium comes out, when is that? August, I think? August. Yeah. So that is coming. Uh, it's a Compendium. It's big. It's big. I mean, it's a thick book. I don't know if they'll go the route of DC's Finest since they're focusing on that, which is another conundrum. <laughs> I feel like Image Deluxe Editions have slowed down. Uh, to me, it feels like it's about the same. What they've tried, though, is the um, hardcover Omnibus Edition of Rat Queens. I'm hoping Shadowline or everybody else at Image takes mm -hmm. note of that and makes more books like that. And that's limited. When is that? Is it limited to like 5,000, I think? Something like that is what they're starting to do. 
What do we got here, Dom? We got Ava's <laughs> Demon Book, book two. This is uh, an original graphic novel mm -hmm. by Michelle Fuss. I don't know how to say that last name. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, it's another. It's another one of those um, web web comics. Uh, I think I might have slipped through one of these because I always like having the chance to because all the web comics are up. I always like to get a chance to preview some of these uh, just to see if maybe I'd like to get them in physical format at some point. It's a good idea. Blood Command Man, Volume 1, collecting the first four issues. <laughs> you weren't kidding about putting Blood Strike in the back. I wasn't joking before the stream. You're like, okay. got to put a background up. And I'm like, well, blood, if Blood Strike's coming, in my head, I'm like, if Blood Strike is coming out uh, for this solicitations previews panel, why not just put it up there as like as the back. Back. I, as I had no idea that he, this was coming out. Okay, so Liefeld went back to Bloodstrike because well, he still owns that character. There's a whole thing with Liefeld, like he sold the rights of Young Blood and Supreme, so he can't reprint those books. And I don't I don't think the owner of those books even cares about reprinting them, unfortunately. For people that enjoyed it. Uh but Bloodstrike is a character and he can revisit. I did the theft is a crime, my God. <laughs> oh, because of Omar Comics. I like his name. Dark Ride. Oh, dude, have you read this? I've read the first volume. I've read the first two volumes. So of, you're ahead of me. Okay. I, yeah. I dig it. Did you like it? I did. Yeah, I did like what I read. I think Josh tends to do better. I like a lot more of his um indie stuff. I like mm -hmm. uh more than more than his DC stuff, which feels weird to say, but I think that's just the way I jive with with uh, Williamson. I so you were a fan of uh, Nailbiter. Yeah, like that's Nailbiter? my favorite work of his. I, I'm digging what he's doing with GI Joe or Cobra Commander. Cobra uh, Commander. Wait, have you read Commander? And, I, I, read, I did. I read I the did. first issue of Commander and I read Duke. Duke, uh, yep. which he's working on, and both are so different. Like one they reads like a horror comic, and the yep. other one, you know. But it's sometimes it's usually like the artist who he works with that typically gets me like sold on his titles. Like I tried out Batman and Robin uh, with him because Simone DeMeo was doing the regular interiors for that series and Howard Porter was on the annual. So I'm like, yeah, let me go check out what was. But no, I think Dark Ride has been a pretty, pretty fun ride. No pun intended. But no, I, I, I like it. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Uh, James is saying that it is coming to an end in March. Steven, how are you, pal? Hope you're doing well, buddy. Off topic, but new Space Coast from Dynamite looks sick. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Dude, we're getting Dick Tracy from Mad Cave. Like, it's it's a freaking awesome time to be in a comics. Like, for the classic stuff coming back, whenever I see Cobra Commander in comics, I hear Chris Latta. I also, in my heart. Will always, always hear Chris Latta. He is the only Cobra Commander and Starscream voice ever. Yes. Kyle Higgins, Joe Clark, Deep Cuts. The and Ramon Perez on Christmas. art. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen him for a while. Maybe this is what he's been working on. He's uh, he's going to draw The Flash with uh, Cy Sperrier for the second arc. Oh, is he? Oh, oh, yeah, oh he I didn't know that. Oh, and thank you for being here, Ace. Uh, thank you. Seriously. Wouldn't be doing these streams if people weren't watching. So thank you so much for keeping me energized, all of you. Smash <laughs> that like button, please. And check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for books like this. Based in the EU. 12 euros for flat rate shipping in the EU EU only. And you put in the code near me condition at the checkout. You, uh, uh, you get free shipping on your next order of 40 euros or more. And that's waltzcomicshop.com. Your reliable source for omnis and collected editions in Europe. Ting. <laughs> Spawn not to Eden Wood up above, though, because Tony S. Daniel is drawing. Oh, yeah, I, I, I did not mean to skip by there. He is both writing and drawing. There's always a chance when it comes to artists, at least the way that I feel. Like, you know, if I see a, a, a an artist write a book, it's always like, we'll see. Yeah, oh, look, go, go, like, you 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 read enough comics and you get burned right and you're like oh maybe you should let someone else write <laughs> and i'm not gonna That's... i'm not gonna go into detail as to who i'm talking about but there's been a lot of artists that i love their artwork 
and yeah, I get so disappointed when they're working by themselves. And I'm like, no, we've been there. Don't do that. It's not good. So I get a co-writer at least. Get a co-writer. Mm -hmm. Um, Tony Danielle. I he's very hit and miss. Some of it works, and some of his Batman did not work mm -hmm. for me. I love his artwork though. I've been a big fan of his since. He was Antonio Daniel uh, working in the pages of Marvel Comics. Um, back in the 90s. Doing, yeah, he was doing X-Force. And I knew, he, dude, I knew back then somebody was going to pull him. I'm like, oh, this is the guy that followed up Capullo. Oh, mm. he's good. Oh, he's got this McFarlane stuff. Oh, he's yep. gone. <laughs> my, Because my exposure with uh, Tony was on Jeff John's Teen Titans run after yeah. McCone the left Titans that book. East, and, right? Yeah, he did. He did Titans East. He did the Red Hood uh he did the red hood story where like jason attacks the titans tower to like kick Solid, him and, yeah yeah and then uh, some of those infinite crisis tie-ins um but no i've i've always appreciated his artwork um very Absolutely. familiar one of, one of the familiar faces for me as like a big batman fan just in general and gunslinger spawn is coming out mm -hmm. issues 19 through 24 brett booth is working on this how in the world has Brett Booth not been pulled to do an X Men comic? That guy has been like he did the he did uh he did X Men Seventeen he did the, the one issue with Jonathan Hickman when they went in the oh yeah yeah show. and at the time he was working on the X Men Legends little mini yeah with uh, Fabian Nicieza for yeah. the uh, uh Summers storyline yeah, Adam X right Adam yeah. Mister Ad but yeah um, but he has like been trying to just like throw himself out there as a name to get an X Men book. Because he, he did have a run on X Men back in uh, when Claremont came back. He did during that era. But I wonder with the with the new books or the new line that's set to launch in the summer. Oh yeah, because May has no X Men solicitations. So, wonder what June's gonna bring. And hack slash back to school. Oh, Thor good. Up. They keep putting these out, and this is a brand new series. In I think it's in continuity. It's I don't think it's a relaunch, uh, but I haven't had a chance to to read it. And this is Zoe Thorogood. Mm -hmm. I love. Mm -hmm. Look at the title from the creator, award winning <laughs> creator. It's lonely. It's like on top of the actual title of the book. Hack slash. There, there's a way to market your titles. <laughs> Uh, like Zoe it's lonely Thorogood. at the center of the earth. No, it's just ha it's hack slash. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to market it, though. Uh, it must have done really well for image. So very happy. I really like her art. I dug her writing. Um, she was the one that actually drew the first time I saw her art was in Rain, that book I was talking about. Mm -hmm. the Joe, Joe, yeah, the Joe Hills loved Earth. it. Loved it. I love to see her on some, you know, some big two titles. That would be interesting to see. A uh, big fan of her work. I know she's a little bit slower, but maybe they can give her like a project, like an event project or something. Haunted Girl. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to read this. Oh, that it's a volume one. Issues one through four. Or nope, not a volume one. It's all and done. Ethan Sachs coming back. Sachs. I think he's got to yeah, after uh, getting off of Star Wars Bounty Hunters. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. That was the best star wars book out there that invader were my favorite to read very underrated no mm -hmm. one was talking about bounty hunters it was so good um uh, is naomi Sachs's wife his wife sister let's see i believe wife ethan Sachs one through four. Oh, it's his daughter Her daughter oh well good for that's, that's pretty awesome cool. that's, that's pretty awesome. cool honestly i like that i like that marco Loren lorenzana is the artist Haunted Girl 1 through 4. That's awesome, dude. I like that. Hexagon. Oh, man. This was fun. I actually did read this series, and this was... The concept Which was fun. Mm -hmm. I had a load of, it's, um, it's weird dimension hopping. That's like the main, main premise of the book. That multiverse? Yes, I like that you said that mention hopping instead yeah. of multiverse because we've come to <laughs> that's right. To, 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 yeah, to, we we have a, we have a word for that now. I keep forgetting. Crazy <laughs> <laughs> mention hopping. I like that more though. I miss that word. Multiverse. You're like rolling your eyes again. Oh we god, they're multiverse. multiverse. <laughs> we've had an Oscar-winning movie that's in a multiverse. We get it. <laughs> Night seasons one. Trade paperback volume one part one. Wyatt Kennedy. 
And this is collecting the first six issues, $9.99. I love that Image is still determined to do that trial, $9.99 price. I noticed that with this, and I noticed it with the Tony Danielle book up here, $9.99. Get you a small taste for yeah. cheap. Yeah. Second volume will be fourteen ninety nine. They, they do it for um, a lot of the Rick Remender books, the Radio Black Volume one. Yeah, no, it's it's a good way to get people involved, just in case, like, yeah, see if you like it or not, want to continue. I, I think it's a great idea. Doctor Strange in the Dimension Hopping <laughs> 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 doesn't have quite that ring to it. Singularity, original graphic novel, Ramon Perez also here. Yeah, Matthew Groom, yeah. Rod Race is on here too. Oh shoot, man. I like I like his art too. And this is an original one and seventeen dollars and ninety nine cents. I wonder when the team determines like, okay, we're gonna do a hardcover or we're going straight trade paperback when it comes to these. Like how they determine that. I love to be sitting there like mm -hmm, yeah. Just oh, we like got Jeff Johns on this book. Put a hardcover on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh Geiger cool. and Junkyard Joe are to getting the Lux editions, Geiger and uh, completely separate from yeah, but um, I know Geiger and Junkyard Joe are getting the Lux editions in like next couple months. Um, Geiger, I think, is coming out in May, it, and Junkyard Joe is like in August. Yeah, I haven't read Junkyard Joe, but I love Geiger. Junkyard Joe is great. Both are great. Do you like it more than Geiger? Uh, I liked it about the same, but I think both are really good. We were at Baltimore Comic Con last year, and he premiered the trailer there, which I didn't even know there was a movie. My wife and I were like, what? No <laughs> no wonder the JSA books keep continually getting to Yeah, I know. It kills me. <laughs> right? It's like you want him to work on the book that you love, but he's yeah, out there doing his own thing. Uh, I don't want him to uh, be I, I guess when you're a movie slash TV producer to your own company, I, I get it. Um, Sunstone, Sunstone. Mercy, Stepan, Stepan Sajic. Um, my, I, I, volume 8. I just talked about my... My experience with Sunstone, how disappointing mm -hmm. I was that I didn't enjoy it because the pitch of the book sounds perfect and up my alley. The artwork mm -hmm. is fabulous. Oh, mm -hmm. it was the book club. That's what it was. It book was the club. book club. We have a we have a book club on, on our Patreon. So my, yeah. my pod co-host is uh -huh. uh, friends with I, – I still don't know how to say his name. And the thing that always stuck with me whenever he talks about Sajik with like other people is he asks Sajik when he first met him, how do you say your last name? And then Sajik said, um, Bulgaria or something like that. Cause he's like, don't bother with the pronunciation. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. I think that's the way I am with my last name. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, yeah, it's a very hard it, last name to say. So many times I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Come back. You gotta choose your battle. He knows who you're talking about. <laughs> yes. Yes. You gotta choose your battles in life, man. And that's a battle I was just I was done in grade school. <laughs> my <laughs> teachers, my peers, whatever. I was done. <laughs> I was done. Uh, thank you for that, James. Yeah, we did do a book club. We did it on Harleen, and I mentioned Maddie and I doing an old reader with Amanda like four years ago on Sunstone. Maddie was like, you got to read the book. It's BDSM. It's two lesbians coming together and like falling in love. And I'm like, oh, this sounds like Strangers in Paradise with a little bit of BDSM. Okay, I'm in. And I love his artwork. Now I'm like, man, these people like to talk. <laughs> I was so disappointed. I was like, I don't, that's not for me. Uh, it's got a huge fan following. Obviously, it it's still continuing. It does. Beautiful artwork, but it just wasn't for me. Uh, but everyone that was on that uh, episode loved it. Like Maddie and Tina and Amanda, they all liked it. Siphon Volume Two, uh, collecting Siphon Volume Two issues one through four, and Transformer Volume One. I cannot wait. I told my wife I'm not reading this. I'm, I'm partly surprised that they are. <laughs> I'm partly surprised that they're doing a direct market cover with John Boy Myers as the cover artist, but but. Dom, that is, is this, the freaking is this, moment in the movie is, when you realize Optimus Prime is a complete badass. When he, like, he's, oh my God, I love that movie. Okay, so you have the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, Megatron must be stopped, mm -hmm. stopped. no matter the cost. Mm -hmm. Transforms into a truck. He hits all the, the Ramjet. He hits, like, all the Decepticons. Then he blasts for the first time outside of his trailer. Like, fire freaking comes out of his engines. 
and it's the, and he pulls his mm. gun out. Oh my god, what a what a manly robot. <laughs> so that that cover makes sense to a lot of us that grew up with that movie. Oh, for uh, sure. Cover number one, that's the one from issue one, right? Yes. That is the issue one cover to Transformers. Uh, and let I... me get this really quick uh, super chat. Probably off topics, how to get replacements. Zero Mike, thank you for the super chat, brother. Replacements for, for what are you, um, like your comics or your covers? What are you talking about? Read, uh, Leave it in the chat, please. Uh, what tier? Oh my goodness, that's a question from Melanie. I'm so sorry. I think it's the $7.77 or $5 tier. One of those. I'm so sorry. It's one of those. She's not home yet. The Omnibus Dust Jacket. Um, did it come from, like? Did it come ship busted or did it like? Did you buy it used? Because if you bought it used, there are people online that make their own covers. They can design a cover for you, and you yourself go and get it printed. Uh, sometimes, like, um, oh, I'm trying to think of Office Depot can print it for you, but some people won't because it's like, oh, it's copyrighted material. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. James is here. It's, an, it's the engagement tier. Thank you for that. Transformers has been my top three ongoing titles for me. It's my first time delving into Transformers. Oh, I, I love the first issue. Um, I told my wife, I'm like, I'm just going to wait for the trade. She's like, you got to read it. It's so good. She's been getting the single issues. Uh, but it is so good. Daniel Warren know. Johnson has just been having fun with this. Mm -hmm. I heard he was taking a break from this third arc. Jorge Corona is going to draw the second arc oh. of the series. Dude, that guy's so good. Is uh, it who's a good artist too? I loved him Middle on West? the Scotty Young book. Yeah, Middle West. Middle West, yeah. yeah. Middle West good, and man. um the Me You Love in the Dark. If you've read it. Oh, I haven't read that one yet. It's really I good too. That was out. Yeah, I need to get on that. But big fan of this. Big fan of the uh, the first. I mean, it's Transformers, yep. and I was weary of it. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna miss the IDW era, and I still do. That will always mm -hmm. have a special place in my heart. But it seems like, yeah, oh, your dog is just it. having oh, fun, geez, man. Dust jacket. I'm so sorry. Oh, the, yeah, oh. definitely. Uh, if you're part of like, I know in our Discord, you can ask in there. They usually point you in the right direction. Uh, but e even if you go to Facebook groups or even Reddit. They'll point you in the right direction. Middle West is out of print? Did not know that. But there are options out there. Uh, but the publishers themselves never replace your dust jackets. Um, unfortunately. I've asked in the past. Where would I start reading Transformers? Oh, my goodness. You Amber, start here. What an awesome question. You could start here. It, this is actually probably the most easiest way to get into it. Um, my childhood will say Marvel Comics. But the, the answer that everybody will give if they've read it is this era right behind me the transformers idw phase two phase two is important to so many people that is the era right there that a lot of ladies would co co uh, cosplay from you don't see co like lady cosplayers from like the original cartoon or the marvel comics but oh my gosh phase two all the ladies are cosplaying when we go to conventions. And I know when I go with my daughter, because she's like, this is cool. They're picking these random characters based on that series, which are, of course, based on the original toy lines or like the Japanese obscure cartoons we never got here. So reminds me of the time I found a trade paperback of Sunstone spinoff Swing. I forgot about that. Under an issue of Invader Zim in a comic grab bag at Ollie's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite Transformers? Oh, dude. Hot Rod. Um, from the comics. Oh, gosh. Cyclonus. Tailgate. Uh, which is so weird to say tailgate in the Transformers. I love that. Uh, Rewind. Oh, dude. So many freaking awesome, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome characters. Have you read that IDW era, Tom? I've read some, partly because a friend of mine in Malaysia, he directed me over to a reading order so I could get through it. Oh, I think okay. one of man favorite. That's a good question. I've always been oddly, at least for the Decepticons, I've always liked Starscream. Um, Starscream's queen. I love that yeah. character. I love. No, I love character. Starscream. In in every incarnation, mm -hmm. <laughs> the inevitable betrayal of Starscream will yep. come. Oh, my yeah. oh, dude, uh, the IDW run has one of my favorite quotes about Starscream though. When Megatron, it's, it's the all hell Megatron storyline when he comes wrecking through the city. 
And Starscream's giving this big speech to the rest of the Decepticons, and then in comes in Megatron, and he's like, that's your problem, Starscream. You talk big when everything about you is small. I was like, oh! <laughs> Damn, Megatron! Man. Pulling strays. <laughs> love it, love it. I know, yeah, I think I'm a Starscream guy. I don't know why. I just love it. Yeah, big fan of that era, man. Brings back a lot of memories of childhood. Um, but yeah, this is fun. This is really fun. And he does a lot of things that if you were like a fan of the of the show growing up, it will break your heart too, because you're like, oh, that's not fair. Yeah, the Transformers reading order. Hey, actually, Dom has volunteered to help me with a little bit of that now that I can give myself a little more time. Um, but let me see. I think that's it. That is it, everybody. Going back to this, um, some stuff sharing, have us back here. I just want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to, again, thank my co-host, Dom of X, for uh, putting it together. And this is all found on comicreleases.com if you want to go there and check it out yourself to see what's coming out. These are the solicits for May of 2024 May. for mm -hmm. these publishers. And if you enjoy these streams, please let me know in the comments down below if you want us to continue it. Uh, because I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun talking to you all and to you, Dom. Where can people find you, Dom? It's a good question. Well, obviously, you can find me on comicreleases.com as I do most of the assisting editing work there, but it's mostly uh, jumbled up together in spots. But to find me, you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Dom of X, if you type that into the search bar for social media such as Instagram. Uh, TikTok and Twitter, you can find me at Dom of X Studio, just the words, no spaces, no anything like that. Uh, Dom of X Studio, and thank you again for having me. This was super fun, and I'm glad we can uh, do this together and make it just like this cool project. I appreciate it, absolutely, dude. You are always welcome back. Thank you, everybody. Smash that like button on the way out and check out cheapgraphicnovels.com. Tell the internet conditions that you're their way for free shipping on your next order after your first one. Right now, they have pre-orders up for Marvel vs. DC Omnibus and the Marvel vs. DC Amalgam Omnibus and also the restock of Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 2 and Volume 3. Have a great day. I have another video coming out later, but it's not me streaming. I filmed that video a long time ago. <laughs> have a go. Sugar Man, dude, where you been? I would, I would have stayed 10 minutes longer if I knew you were in the stream, dude. I hope you've been well, my brother. Hope you've been healthy. Bye, everybody. Bye, Amber and Sergeant Savage and Elon. You all have a wonderful day and a good week and a good week. <laughs>